Hey you guys, just a real quick real time update. We're still in the US Virgin Islands. We're on St. John's right now. We're still practicing social di distancing and not going ashore and not, what else aren't we doing? Anything, we haven't been close to people in quite some time. We've been spending all of our time editing videos and podcasts for you. Yeah, so we feel what's going on around the world right now. We know that it's not a great situation and we are so thankful for all the healthcare workers and the police and firemen and everyone who is keeping things running right now. We hope you like this video. We had some awesome sailing all the way from Martinique to Dominica and yeah, just I had a lot of fun putting this one together. We hope you enjoy it. My name is Billy, this is Sierra, and this is our dog Jetty, and this is Adrenaline, our full-time floating home and office. Join us as we sail, surf, swim, dive, fish, and kiteboard through new and exotic places every day. Make sure you subscribe below and sit back and enjoy. We have just left our anchorage at St. Anne's in Martinique and we are heading to St. Pierre. So we get a little bit closer for our jump off to Dominica. Thoughts on St. Anne's? Oh, it was so cool. It was such a nice, quiet, clean little town. They had grocery stores, restaurants, and that awesome bakery. And then not too far away, La Marin had everything you can need. Did you sell for a, a SIM card? The marine stores and a bunch of food stores, health food stores, um, hardware stores, just everything. And it was still not like a crazy busy city or anything. It was very clean. It was clean, it was easy to walk around. So nice. We, very cruiser friendly, lots of dinghy docks. We learned a little bit of French uh, through practicing online with Skillshare. It got us by and even if we didn't like couldn't really translate at least it let the person know that you were trying to speak French and then like it they wouldn't mind so much like just going back to like Google Translator or something but I mean just learning the basics was useful just please and thank you and numbers and where is this how are you stuff like that it's been super windy the past week and a half two weeks and today's been the first day where it's kind of calmed down a little bit, but still enough to sail. So everybody is out and moving. Everyone's been stuck in kind of the same place for a while. So now everyone's on the move and there's tons of boats out here. What was your favorite thing we did? Of course, the volcano, that was really cool. And but just being in St. Anne and, and having that little beach and the hiking trail to hike and run on, I rolled my foot, but before I rolled my foot, it was great running trail. Just the area being just, hanging out in the area. Billy got a few boat projects done while we were here. He replaced the main sheet. Put on that fancy clutch. Build another hole in the boat. Any other projects you did? Yeah, just kind of tweaked our backstay system. Hey, how you doing?
very pretty. I think this giant mountain is the volcano we climbed the other day. We were in those clouds. The whole time. <laughs> it's really deep to really close to shore, so we're just trying to find a spot with enough room to get close to shore to anchor. You're paying attention to all those wreck things? Yeah. Right here. Look how close shore is. 150 feet. Definitely looks great. Today is the day. The day that we check out of Martinique and sail to Dominica. Dominica? Not sure. We'll find out when we get there what you're supposed to call it. Are you excited? Heck yeah. Hold on, I gotta clean, clean up all the croissant flakes all around there. But... What are we supposed to see here? Whales and turtles and stuff. Sperm whales, humpback whales, dolphins, leatherback sea turtles, boiling lakes, hiking up craters, uh, parrots. But before we go to Dominica, we're anchored right off this little town called St. Pierre and just under the big volcano that we climbed a week ago called Mount Pele. And in the early 1900s, I think 1902 or 1903, something like that, that volcano erupted and killed like over 30,000 people, I think. Except one person. And? He, he was in jail. He was in jail. <laughs> and how did he not get killed? Like the jail stopped the lava I don't know what happened, but I know it took a couple days for people to come get him, but he was the sole survivor in this well, area. Anyway, all around this town, there's just like ruins, like old, old ruined buildings. And then right here, like directly behind us in a few hundred feet of water, there's a ton of shipwrecks from the volcano. And that's what all these markers are blocking, right? So you don't anchor in there? Yeah, you're not allowed to anchor inside of there. Let's get a move on. Oh, oh we got to check out here. That's why we're going into St. Pierre. This place is way different from St. Anne, huh? Yeah, it's like a uh, historical, not historical. Just way older buildings and stuff. Really cool. Definitely one of those ruins from the volcano. We're just looking for the tourist office. That's where we have to check out from. I think it's right up these steps.
Bonjour. Bonjour. Où êtes-vous là Ah, oh, vous regardez, c'est en bas. Ah, ok. C'est un mélange. Merci, merci. Ouais. I think that's just saying that the tourism building was moved right back to where we got off the dinghy dock, pretty much. I saw that building back over there. The building was moved. Oops, at least we got a cool walk. And look at the view. Raise in the mainsail. You got a big volcano in your background. Wind is forecasted to be about 15 knots in the channel between Dominica and Martinique here. So we're gonna put one reef in the mainsail um, because the sail probably kick up a little bit above 15 knots and 14, 15 knots is about our limit of where we like to be with uh, before we put one reef in the mainsail. For you guys who don't know sailing too much, a reef just means we're shortening the mainsail. So we have less sail area out uh, and less sail to catch the wind, so we'll be less powered up. Um, generally, mainsails have two or three reef points, and if you're down to that second or third reef point, it's pretty windy. And we can do the same thing with the Genoa. The Genoa just uh, furls up on the furler, but they're still kind of reef points in that sail for us to tell how furled up it is. Here we go, we're already sailing pretty good. I'm gonna let out the front sail, the Genoa. We're gonna let it out all the way because it's not super windy yet and it's pretty easy to furl up and reduce sail when it does get windy. So we'll let it out all the way until the wind picks up and then we'll furl some in a little bit. How fast is that GPS say? Seven. Seven knots? Seven knots. We're on a broad reach right now, which is amazing having sailed into the wind for so long. Um, I bet you once we get into the channel, it's gonna turn to a beam reach or maybe even a tight reach. That means that uh, the wind will come right from our side or a little bit in front of our side, which is still a really good direction, much better than the wind coming from in front of us. Uh, it's been feels so good to be sailing not into the wind anymore on a beam reach usually. And then as we go up the chain of islands, the wind will be coming from behind us more and more, which will just make it easy, easy sailing. Sierra's putting out some lures to see if we can catch a fish. So. All these sailing technical terms confused me for the longest time until I saw a picture. If the wind is coming straight in front of you, you can't sail. No zone. If it's coming from like this direction, it's called close haul. And we particularly don't really like that angle. Close reach, beam reach, which is our favorite. Broad reach. That's my favorite. Broad reach. Oh. In heavy wind. And then we have uh, downwind. Dead downwind. On our Instagram and Facebook posts, we, you guys probably know we've been having very not great luck catching fish, and everyone told us we need to give a di get a diving lure. So this one dives. It's deadly when you're trying to hook it to stuff, but maybe it'll work. And we're off. The engine is, our one working engine is off. I know you guys may be asking, did we fix our other engine yet? But if you don't follow too closely, we said we're gonna do that up in St. Martin and that's still the plan. I'm actually getting a bunch of stuff shipped to St. Martin. You can get like partial containers shipped through Tropical. They'll consolidate packages for you and then they'll put it in a container that's being shipped by ship to uh, one of its destinations. So we're gonna do that in St. Martin and it's actually very, very affordable, especially compared to like FedEx or UPS. That's what we're doing. We're getting all our rebuild parts uh, shipped there and we're gonna rebuild the engine in St. Martin probably in about a month or so we'll be up there. 
for now, it's still just one engine. And as long as that engine keeps running decently well, oh, we'll be all right. You had to say. Really neat. If you've never sailed around big mountains before, wind gets a little funky. Super windy, then it's super dead. Then it's a totally different direction. We're in the channel now between Martinique and Dominica and it's pretty windy. Um, I mean, I guess not that windy. It's like 15 to 20 knots. Pretty steady. We're on like a close reach. You know where that is on your arrow? It's not from the side. It's coming from just in front of the side. One and a half to two o'clock? Two o'clock. Unfortunately, it is just a barracuda. We always catch barracuda. We never keep them. But let, let us know what you guys would do. Would you guys eat them? We've heard that they have a high chance of cigatera. But then again, you talk to some people and then a lot of the locals and the islanders eat barracuda. Um, we've never have that we caught ourselves, but We've been thinking about it, so let us know in the comments. Would you guys eat a barracuda? If we catch a small one, we'll try it, but that one was big. No, thank you. Dominica or Dominica, however you say it. Beautiful sail today. We're here, we're just getting in the lead. Hopefully we have some wind to keep on sailing. It's been getting really shifty around these mountains and volcanoes and stuff. Good sail though, we were like Mm, beam reach and close reaching most of the way. Steady winds, 15 to 20 knots the whole way. We had this boat go way out to, to windward and then they kind of angled back in. So they've been with us the whole way as well. Here we are. There's two main areas to anchor here and uh, the one in the north is called Portsmouth and then the one in the south is called, what's it called? Starts with the R. Starts with the R. Rose, Rose something. So we're gonna start Rose with the one in the south. What? Rosu? Rosu, yeah, something like that. We're gonna start with the one in the south. Yeah, tomorrow's Saturday, so we have to check in tomorrow and hopefully they're open, but we might have to pay like an overtime fee or something like that. Yeah, this is all a protected area right here. I don't think you're allowed to anchor in here at all. Or fish, that's why we just read the line. The island I've been waiting for. What are you so excited about? I haven't seen dolphin porpoise in months. Literally like six, seven months. And they're here and they're giving us a show. They just spun like eight times. Come closer over to us. I guess it wasn't a ray that I saw. It was dolphin. 
We're just sailing in this light shifty wind just right into the anchorage here. I think we're gonna pick up a mooring. It seems like that's what most people do here. The an it, anchoring's pretty deep. So if no one comes over to us, then we'll, we'll probably try to anchor. But I think there's boat boys all around that kind of lead you to a mooring and it's like $10 a day or maybe a little more. We just dropped the hook right here, unfortunately. We're right next to like a cruise ship here and some industrial buildings. It's kind of noisy. Cool little town is up there. But it didn't look like any good spots to anchor. There were a bunch of moorings and on the chart at least, there was no good spots to anchor. But here is, is a good spot to anchor. We set right away, so we're just kind of close to shore. And yeah, I don't know. We're thinking maybe we'll just cruise tomorrow to the other spots. It does kind of look a little run down over here. And there were mixed reviews about whether to stay here and do your exploring or just go to the other spot and do your, do your exploring from there. Because most places, pretty much most places, you have to take a uh, cab to anyway. Run down doesn't bother us. There didn't look like there was a great dinghy dock or even like a great beach to walk jetty and usually when areas look kind of run down like that it means there's a lot of stray dogs so we'll probably go to the other spot i think yeah we'll see what happens really pretty landscape though like look at these mountains in the background what you doing we're using our queue flag which means we're not checked into the country yet cruise ships leaving, check this out. So the pilot goes up on the piling and throws the lines off. That pilot, not that pilot. I missed it, he's throwing the lines off. And then they pull him in. Look at all those people. Is that any of you guys? On the Viking Sea? In Dominica or Dominica? Look at that sunset. Oh my goodness. Wow. We're just getting a little workout done on the front of the boat. Jetty's relaxing. Oh, you just finished? I slacked. Yeah, let me see your weights. We didn't go to the beach to get sand for our sandbag, so... You look like an athlete. Alright guys, it's yoga time. And then we're gonna make some dinner, just go to sleep, and then see what tomorrow brings. Maybe leave, maybe stay, hopefully check in. Yeah, we'll see you later. We hope you guys liked that video. We had a blast sailing up to Dominica. We can't wait to explore what Dominica has to offer. And we can't wait to show you what it has to offer. Um, we know now that it's pronounced Dominica. In Not the video we Dominica. said like 25 times, Dominica, Dominica, Dominica. Um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching as always. And if you wouldn't mind sharing this video on social media, sharing it with your friends and family who you, you think might enjoy it. And, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And if you guys need a recipe for dinner tonight, I give you pesto spaghetti squash. Super, super simple. If you don't know what a spaghetti squash is, go look for the giant yellow pumpkin looking thing at the store. Where's the recipe going to be? Um, I'm just going to tell you, you cut a spaghetti squash in half, cut out all the, get out all the insides and then put it in the oven for about 45 minutes on 375 degrees. Then you take out the inside and it looks like spaghetti. And then I just, you just scrape it out with a fork. And then I just added a can of pesto sauce and mushrooms and peas. We would have added onions, but we don't have any. Mm, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next time.